I was a good student, not a great student. And then I started off as a great student at Texas and progressively got worse once I realized I might go to the NFL and figured out the system. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh, see, that's what happens when you're too honest. It uh, comes back to bite you in the ass. Yeah, I was, a, I was a good student in high school. And then I got straight A's my freshman year in college. Taking what? Well, some le legit classes. Like, legit. Yeah. I was trying to, like, hey, mom and dad, I'm here doing school. And, hey, Mac I'm Brown. Studying. Mac Brown, I'm studying. Yeah. And uh, then I would say late sophomore year. Things like, started to change. Maybe I can play this game. I don't have to go to class. Yes, uh, that yes, definitely. Interesting and then, that, yeah. you, that, that you bring up college in yeah, Texas, right. wonderful college town, Austin. Yep. Guess what got voted for the second year in a row the number one college town in America? Austin, Texas. That that's a very good answer. Right. It's actually Iowa City, Iowa. What the? F that's a, back, a challenge flag. Where's Al Riveron when you need him? Yeah. That's yeah. some bullshit. Somebody who knows okay. the shit from the U.S. Census Bureau. Did you just say shit? some person. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So U.S. Census College Town, USA. Two years in a row, Iowa I, City. I challenge that. Somebody's on the take there. What's the criteria? Know. What's the criteria that, that's leading to all this doubt? Oh, well, uh, let's see. Criteria, I guess, let's see. What have was, you been? Have you been to Iowa City? I have not, so okay. I have no okay. I've nothing. Been to Austin. To, you haven't? Okay. Yeah. So I have nothing to stand on here. Yeah. Uh, uh, I guess, you know, Why places, places to go outside the campus, okay. the campus itself, you know, atmosphere of sports, party scene, yeah. education. I think yeah. those are we the. We got you. You got us? Yeah. It's all Hawks stuff. It's all Hawks? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're not biased or anything. Sure. We're organizing a field trip to Iowa City. Anybody who wants to come. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought of you too. I wore your little collared shirt the other day. Did you? And I forgot to take a damn picture of it. Where were you? I did. I was at the house, kind of around, going to picking up Bill up at football practice. You just wore it around the house. And I was like, I, well, I had kind of worked out and I wanted to throw a shirt on. I didn't yeah. want to shower, so yeah. I picked the Iowa shirt. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, that's I nice. I buttoned the top button and I was like, all right, this goes good with my little black workout pants. Picture I next time. I will. I forgot. I'm sorry, and I thought about it at the time, but then I forgot and had to be a dad. And you can wear it on the field trip. Okay. 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 All right, here we, we go. go. Here we go. All right, you know what it is. Uh, we got Big Phil, Big <laughs> up here in about 30 minutes, okay? So we got him. I have no idea what he's going to talk about, and there's no point in even trying to figure out what he's going to talk <laughs> about because he's going to go where he wants to go. And today is Wednesday, which means it's what the f*** <laughs> happened day. And we're going we're gonna to hit a few things. Saints Cardinals, Texans Raiders, Eagles Bills. Steelers, Dolphins, Patriots, Browns, and get into some of the meteor, uh, the meat plays of game-changing plays, interesting plays, plays, to us, plays that mattered yeah. in the football game. And uh, we'll start off with Saints Cardinals, right? And there we go. Starting? Yeah. Taysom Hill's touchdown reception, right? Yeah, that's that's where we want to talk about. Well, I think the first thing to talk about, and the Taysom Hill touchdown pass itself is nothing extravagant okay it, it is easy I mean it's really it's it's a play we would have called like a uh, gun empty left 73 Y stick looky in the West Coast offense mm -hmm. and basically it in this little there's three receivers to the left two receivers to the right and the the two inside receivers to the left basically just run five yard outs yeah that's all it is and on the back side the outside receiver runs a go and what we call the looky is Michael Thomas who in the West Coast offense, the looky means, because he's going to look at how he's being covered, mm -hmm. he kind of runs the route dictated on the leverage of the coverage. If the guy plays him inside, he's going to go inside a little bit more and then bang it out, out like an out route, right? right? If the guy plays him head up or outside, he kind of attack him, and then it almost becomes like an inside slant, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, if there's zone and they're totally, he might just sit up and just sit in between two guys. But that's basically what it was. Um, Drew Brees just sees that Taysom Hill on his little Y stick route or out route from the inside of three to the left just sees he's got leverage right away. The guy's playing him inside. He's going to yeah. go five yards, and he puts it right on him. Right. Simple as that. I think the point and the thing that I found interesting about the game in general, and I know you watched them at, and go ahead. What do you want to kick him with? I want to ask about yeah. that play. Yeah, okay, If you're cool, lining cool. up. Don't let me go too far, okay. so tell me to shut the I'm up trying to read. I'm just yeah. trying to read you here. Yeah, yeah. Because I watched that play a bunch of times. Yeah. First of all, it, it was uh, it stood out as a little different because the Saints so often go with the bunch formations in tight. Sure, they so do. So like you explained, they actually spread them out, which made it easier to see what the defense is doing. Yes, it was. When Drew Brees looks at that matchup, and he's like, oh, I've got my backup quarterback against the first pick of the second round who was supposed to, you know, could have been a first rounder. Right. That's advantage who? 
Yeah, well, not rhetorical question. No, like, who do you think has the advantage? Well, I, I, I mean, I do think the Saints have the advantage, but it's against your normal logic, I guess. Right. Is where you're, yes. You when would, they were thinking about drafting, I think it's Murphy. I don't yeah, know it is. Did. It is Byron Murphy. Right. They had that entire night to think about who do we want with this pick. Right. Let's get a corner who could guard the backup quarterback in man-to-man. -man. Yeah, yeah. and it, He it, was wide open. He was wide Drew open. Drew even threw it a little bit behind him. He did, but it was all out. So it's all out blitz, right? So it was basically just five on five. There's right. no safety back. Everyone's playing about four or five yards off because they're thinking, man, our pressure's going to get there, and they're going to try to throw something quick. And more times than not, when teams throw something quick, it's an inside breaking route, right. something like that. So – the advantage is, and then again, this goes back to great coaching, Drew Brees knowing people, trusting people. He knows, okay, that guy is going to protect me inside because he's not going to want me to just dump the ball over the middle and, ooh, it's easy touchdown. And then he knows that Sean Payton has coached it right and how they coach it, and he knows that he can trust Taysom Hill to not panic in the route, you know, push the guy. Like, if he's playing you a little inside, attack his leverage. So then kind of run at him and make him go inside even a little more. And then, bam, you turn around, and all of a sudden you got three or four yards separation. And right. Breeze is, of course, great at anticipating, seeing when he's about to make that break. And he puts it, yeah, like he put it a little behind him. Yeah. Probably because he just wasn't quite sure who was out there in front of him. So he just throws a safe ball right into his body, touchdown. So how many times out of ten would you expect Hill – Straight up man. Yeah. Not a lot of help for the corner. Right. To win in that situation. How many times out of 10? Well, the crazy thing is, and this is how freaky Hill is, like, I, I mean, I think Hill wins like seven out of 10 times. I was going to say eight. He, yeah, yeah, maybe I was really going to say eight, and I decided to just be a little more <laughs> like, uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess a little more even there. But I, I'm, I'm, I mean, Hill's, he's smart. He can stick his foot in the ground and mm -hmm. burst out of a break. And he's legit fast. To where, like, I think DBs have seen enough film now that they go, he can run by me or he can run across the field and I better get on my horse if I want to, like, catch him on a shallow cross or anything like that. Right. So he scares you physically. He does. And uh, I think that was one of the big takeaways from the game. Now that Drew Brees is back, right, and they yeah. got Teddy Bridgewater as the backup, yeah. Taysom Hill is now involved in the involved, offense. Yeah. He is. And he's a great weapon for that yeah. offense. I mean, they're not, like, the most – you know, explosive offense in the yep. world as far as yeah. throwing bombs and breaking 70-yard touchdowns. That's not what they're or, about. Or even throwing it 20 yards down. No, field, right, honest. right. Let's be honest, yeah. right. I think that's, you know, that's another thing to go into, too. I mean, Drew Brees. What you, would you see that was different? Because Teddy was really good. He was, I think, very good. both of us thought yep. that he was going to be. Yes. Uh, but now Brees is back. Everything was a, a tick better, like percentage yes. a little better, yeah, yeah. Uh, yards per completion a little better, but it was basically the same. Like if you look at Bridgewater's best games yes. in his five starts, not that much different like to the naked eye. No, I, I'm what with you. What did you see play calling wise, execution wise, that was a little different with number nine? Yeah, I, and, and I mean, I think, you know, first off, I, I think you're spot on. And I also think just like, you know, you remember like maybe early in the season, I was like, hey, with the Saints, and it wasn't a disrespect to the players. I was like, it's yeah. more about the plays than the players. Right. And because Peyton's coaches and he's so creative and all of that. But I think the biggest thing I took away was I felt like there was more, at, a little more at the line of scrimmage of like, check with me and check with me and him just orchestrating people really quick. And then, okay, we're ready. Let's go set hut. And the pace was a little quicker. And I felt like, yes, there was a little more communication at the line of cr scrimmage at times, probably because Sean called more two-way plays in the huddle. What do you mean? You know, like oh. Drew, Drew's back, so we can call two in the huddle. Okay, right, And right. he'll get everybody on the same page. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's it's 72 Z bingo U split, can it with 58 Lexus, dummy snap count, check with me at the line of scrimmage. That's what I one. wondered five you know, weeks ago or six weeks ago. Right if Sean would have to call it that much differently with Bridgewater because he's been calling plays for Drew Brees yeah, and letting him do things like that for over a decade. Right, right. And I, I think that's probably where, you know, with, with, with Bridgewater, it probably started off a hair slow because he probably just went, you know what, not going to make the guy think too much. Yeah. You know, I don't want to have him trying to communicate at the line of scrimmage while he's still getting into the flow of getting used to being a starting quarterback and all that. So I think he called some more all-purpose plays. Like, hey, this play, yeah, it's not going to, like, blow your mind away, but – uh, it's a good play versus any coverage, and I know Teddy's comfortable, and you know I'll, I'll protect and maybe keep an extra guy in the block, and mm -hmm. we just won't mess up the game that way. Right. So I think that's the big thing I took away, nonetheless. But when it when it comes specifically to the Saints and that offense, you know, and we're not going to hit the defense in this game at all, but their defense is phenomenal. I mean, that that's one great thing they got going for them, and of course their offense is great too. 
But I think the, the two things that just jump out to me more than anything, I mean, their O-line. Their O-line is just their bludgeoning group. Mm -hmm. They really are. I don't go away watching New Orleans Saints film and going, whoa, those are some creative runs. I don't go, like, I do that with New England. Right. And I do that with Kyle Shanahan out in San Francisco. New Orleans kind of goes, these are our three or four runs, yep. and we're nasty up front, and mm -hmm. we are going to blow your ass off the ball, and let's just see if you can stop it. Right. And they found a team in Cardinals that could not stop it. Right. And right. the Cardinals also, I mean, not only with the run game, but I thought in the passing game too, I kept waiting for something to look different. Like yeah. You hear about these adjustments and right. how coaches make changes. Right. It was the same in the fourth quarter as the first. Guys were running as, as open on the similar kind of plays in the fourth as they were in the second. Like, I was waiting for some kind of adjustment so guys weren't running free by themselves underneath, and, and we it saw that never a lot. Happened. I, why? I, yes, I don't know why either. And, and one of the, and I know you don't have my notes for, for this game I specifically. No. Yeah, because I was kind of in a rush today, and I couldn't take pictures, and I'm a little behind. I can't read your writing anyway. So yeah, it it's doesn't good. matter. Give me a break. But um, I, I was not. I, I'm, a, I'm with what you're saying there, though. I agree. I don't think the game plan was right by the Cardinals. Yeah. You know, one blitz what, or coverage. Well, a little bit of both. Yeah. I mean, the coverage especially though. You know, you're playing the, the Saints right now, and you said it. You know, there's there's no passes over 20 yards. No. Why are you playing you 10 yards off? On one off? hand, the number of passes drew over 10 yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Yes, you can. Right? You definitely can. And I would say, like, out of those out of those passes you're talking about, like the longest pass to Taysom Hill, the longest pass to uh, Hill the tight end, the longest pass to Michael Thomas. Like, you know, that's so that was a 28-yard gain, a 36-yard gain and a 29-yard gain, they were like, I don't care who plays quarterback in football. It's going right. to have the same yardage. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They could have put you in there, and it would have been the same exact results. They were great game plan plays, right. whether it was Michael Thomas catching the shallow cross and having no one around him yes. or the slant route, yeah. any of that. Yeah, and to me, if you're going to play the Saints right now, and if there is a weakness, you know, it's, it's Drew Brees' ability to stretch the field vertically. So I would tend on making him make those type of throws, and let's see if they can beat me that way. Right. Then the vice versa of what we saw is let's play back yeah. and let him throw like Latavius little, Murray out routes for touchdowns yeah. and things like a that. A little mini prevent. Not not a prevent in the yeah. sense that they're 40 yards off. Right. And like, you know, we'll give you 30 yards. But there was never anybody underneath these crossers. He just kept hitting them and kept, hit, kept hitting them. Yep. And... I'm going to be watching now against the Saints upcoming weeks to see if somebody figures out a way to get a defender underneath all this. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think that will, you know, what we saw towards the end of last year when the Saints offense kind of hit a, you know, a bump in the road and didn't, and didn't quite put up the yards and Drew didn't look the same is I do think teams caught on to it. Mm -hmm. And the numbers bear that out. They bear it out this year. They bear it out last year about intended air yards and how much the yeah. ball travels in the air. You know, he's... He, he errors on being Charlie Checkdown, right. but yet it's not Checkdowns in their offense. They're game, like the, the touchdown pass to Latavius Murray. Mm -hmm. He runs the halfback option route. Right. They run, it's a two, there's two tight ends to the right. There's two receivers to the left. They run vertical, right? And he is now one-on-one -on -one with the middle linebacker. That play is for him and him only. Yeah. I mean, that's all it's for. It's truly like being taught because I know I had this play in my offense under John Gruden. It's a West Coast play. It's truly window dressing to just throw it. So Drew's looking down the field like he's reading something, mm -hmm. but he's reading nothing. Sean's just going, look over here. So maybe the secondary will move. And then on your fifth step, come back to the back, and he'll make the proper read on where to break. Mm -hmm. And if you just put the ball on him, he'll have right. a chance to make something happen. And that's what happened with Savius Murray. Why do you think, I think the Saints are a great example of this, why are there so many offenses now where it used to be if you have a bunch, bunch trio of wideouts out to the left, they're all way out wide. Yeah. And now, not just on third and one, first and ten, you have a bunch formation with three wideouts right next to where the tight end should be. Yeah. You see that a lot more. See it a lot. Saints do it all the time. Yes. Why do you think that there's a lot more of that now than there used to I be? I think um, – the, That's the, how they're getting guys open they, from that formation. They definitely do. They get it open for that formation a lot. One, uh, you know, he's got a lot of creative ways to do different things out of the bunch sets. You can threaten people. Also, he wants to run inside, but when you get in those sets, the threat yeah. of running outside is real too, okay. right? So that yeah. would be another thing. You know, the toss bunch crunch play is what mm -hmm. we would call that in the West Coast offense, 98-99 bunch crunch. I think that's one aspect of it too. And then 
probably because of play, play action or even just through drop back pass design, he can design ways with those three guys coming off the ball that can kind of stress his zone out. So now they're like compact, but as he says, said Hut, they have to expand like, oh, this guy's going there and this guy's going there. And then he can tell one guy to sit up right. as the other two expanded the zone for him out of that bunch. I would think those are probably the reasons of why he does yeah. that. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. Th that formation right now is advantage offense. It is. It more. definitely is. It's a, t it's a tough formation because you're also seeing like, the speed sweep reverses off of it. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, if you think of the 49ers game, and if you saw like the one Debo Sam, like people are faking the toss sweep, and then the inside slot receivers coming underneath, and they're handing it to them. Picks seem a little easier. Picks are definitely easier, yeah. no doubt about it. And one of the reasons it was always easier to throw a tight end is because he's closer to you. Definitely. Well, if you bring everybody in a bunch, Michael Thomas is also close. He's to you almost like a tight end that right. way, right? I mean, he's just a big body. They use him like a tight end in the rest of football, except he can run after the catch a little, right. and he's a really good route runner, but. You know, the big thing with the Saints, their defense, their offense could be overpowering under the old line. And yes, I would be more aggressive with them if I were to play them as far as not letting Brees throw those short passes. Uh, prove to me you can beat me throwing, down, throwing the ball down the field. And the other thing is, you know, and we're going to get into this a little bit, but when you play the Saints, the, the first thing I think you got to do is, is stop the bullshit plays. What's and when I say the play? bullshit plays, I mean running back screens, wide receiver screens, the all the the early f you plays that Sean Payton puts in the game plan. And how do you stop those? Well, you, you have to have tremendous focus through the, like your linebacker's got to be really keyed in to the screen game. It should almost start, like I always go back to Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis says the first things he always did mm -hmm. in a game week when he played really good offenses was, I'm not going to let the screen game beat me. Hmm. Because, the, you know, when you're playing a team like the Saints or the Patriots, you know, they have so many pass concepts and play action passes. You're, you're so worried about, oh, Michael Thomas over the middle and the back out of the backfield with the option routes. And, oh, then they run, you know, three verticals and they'll hit the tight end down the middle. And you're like, man, we got to stop all that stuff. And they do things off it and they come off and, okay, we, we got that stopped. And then they run those patterns and, oh, damn, hmm. the back slipped out on the yeah. verticals and the tight end down the middle. And now he's on the right side here and they got two linemen in front of him and, you're screwed that way. You know, that, that's where they're brilliant, and that's where Sean Payton's brilliant. But the Saints are awesome. They're the third best team in the NFL for my money. I they heard are. Tony Dungy say on Sunday night he thinks they're the best. He thinks they're the best. Before we move yeah. on to the next game, i got to yeah. ask, so who, who are the top two? Uh, the, the Patriots and 49ers. And I know the, then, I know then the record the says Saints. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, no, I truly believe that. I think the Saints and, I mean, the 49ers. What and was the order you had them in? I, I'm going to give New England the edge, but barely. Okay. I mean, I really think it's... Is that based off the fact that they're champs or something that you see right now? No, I, I honestly think I'm giving it to them. I, I think really if I went away just from the film itself, yeah. I probably should say the 49ers are the best team yeah. in the sport right now, but I am giving the pedigree, the ability to execute in the clutch, mm -hmm. the Brady over Garoppolo factor for me. I think that's probably why I just give them the edge a little bit. Okay. You know, as much as we talk about the, the, the Patriots defense, the number one defense in football is the San Francisco 49ers. They're killing people. I know. They're yeah. killing people. Yeah. Uh, so th it, it's, they're both special teams, but the Saints are awesome and certainly could have something to say about those top two teams when all said and done. Game two, Texans yeah. 27, Raiders 24. Yeah. Or jumping off point here, Deshaun Watson getting kicked in the face. Yeah. Just, and then spinning around, the, the fact that he was kicked in the face is like, oh, my God, wow, that's impressive. Yes. But avoiding the sack, whether he got kicked in the face or not, is to me where, where that one starts. Yeah, well, it, it is amazing. And that's what makes um, the Texans, you know, they're a team where, and I think you've heard me say this before, their, their formula on the football offensive side is run the ball. It's, you know, he's patient with the run ball. Then when, they, when running the ball, when they drop back to pass, they look to strike. Like, they're not looking to, like, oh, we're going to dissect you with four-yard completions. It's mm -hmm. like, we're going to hit Hopkins for 20, and then we're going to come back and try to hit, you know, Kenny Stills for 25. And uh, I don't get blown away by their schematics. Right. But between those two things, it stresses the defense out. Oh, man, we got to stop the run. Oh, man, we got to get really deep to stop Deshaun Watson's bombs over our head. And then, you know, Watson's ability to make plays off of it to what you're saying yeah. is the other thing. So the play itself, uh, I mean, it's unreal. And, you know, in, 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 in this is like in New England terms, I couldn't remember what they call the Y stick nod in New England. Because I try to go through like Billy O runs in New England often. Right. So it was gun trips right. And I wrote 72 Y stick nod par. And par in the New England offense means a post and a read. 
to Hopkins on the backside, ran a post route. The back came out of the backfield. And how we just talked about Latavius Murray running the option route. Well, New England calls it a read route, but it's the same thing. And so they had that on the backside. And then on the front side, they basically, Fells makes it look like he's going to run the five yard out and then goes vertical yep. because they will do that down there. And he's really the number one read and the guy he wants to look to. But pass protection's not great. Right. Tunzel got hurt a few plays before. So Arden Key comes off the left edge. And now Deshaun steps up and Arden Key grabs him and swings him around, mm -hmm. which is amazing, first of all, that Deshaun Watson keeps his balance and stays up. But then swings him around. And then as he breaks the tackle, yeah, Arden Key's foot comes up, kicks him right in the eye. Max Crosby now, who's also there off the other edge because they had to put the uh, Dan Skipper, who they traded to get from the New England Patriots, in a right tackle because Tunzel got hurt. So he's just getting to the flow of the game. And so now he's been kicked in the eye. He's running. And as he's getting ready to throw, of course, he fixes his face mask. <laughs> And getting ready to throw, Max Crosby's grabbing his ankle. Yeah. And throws a laser. Yeah. I mean, a, a, just a missile. Right. I mean, to where, you know, and I wrote his name down. Who the hell was it? 59, to hear Whitehead. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's there to intercept the pass. Yeah. The ball's behind the. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. But I think the pace of the ball went by him so fast, he couldn't even react to, like, make a play on it. I think right. he thought, like, oh, gosh, I'm in a good position here. And all of a sudden he went, what? He caught it. Yeah. Like, it, it literally went like that. And it's just the amazement of Deshaun, Deshaun Watson. It's one of those plays where it's like, I, I, I watch it because I know we're going to talk about it, so I'm studying it. After a while, I'm like, you know what? It's, this is just a applause. This was fun to watch. Yes. Amazing athlete. Yes. Great wherewithal. Yep. Great play. There, um, yes. If you, if, if you have something in addition to, to that about the scheme or something else next level, I'm all ears. But yeah. It's just like a. It's kind wow, of what they are, though. I'm Deshaun Watson, and, and and you're not. Yeah. No. I and and it was you know one of the things that I I had said for two weeks in a row because the Raiders had to play Rodgers and then Deshaun Watson. I said, yeah. you know, the Raiders. I got a lot of respect for them and what they're doing. Their offense is doing really well. Their defense just doesn't have a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. And what scared me in this game is I, you know, I, I think I was pretty close in picking the score and everything because I thought the Raiders would stay close. But ultimately. When you don't have enough talent against a guy like Deshaun Watson, those are the games he can take over physically. Mm -hmm. Even if your game plan's right, it doesn't matter. Oh, everybody's covered? Okay, well, you don't have any great defense ends that I'm scared. I'll run away from a little bit. And your linebackers aren't that great either, so yeah. I'll make them miss and then make it throw down the field. And, yeah, it was great coverage, but I made the play last for 10 seconds. Let's mm -hmm. see you guys cover for 10 seconds. That's the beauty of them. But that then does go into, again, to that original formula we talk about the Texans. The fact that they run the ball and – even though it's not mind-blowing again, their pass game does put pressure on you because it's aggressive. And Watson, is a, he looks to strike when he drops back. He's not looking to throw underneath. He is, he is not Charlie Checkdown. He is Bobby Bombs away. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of their offense in general. They got all the, the key plays you want in it, but nothing mind-blowing, like I said. And, yeah, I don't, you know, it's good. They're, you know, they can get in the playoffs and maybe win a game. But I don't know if they can beat the elite teams in the in football that way really yeah. consistently, and that's the problem. I was going to ask you if, if you'd seen growth that way because I think the last time you and I mm -hmm. talked about the Texans, yeah. it was it's fun to watch. They're good, but they don't help him enough schematically. No, they like don't. We just talked about New just Orleans. Just not enough easy plays. That was clearly like that. the number one impression about that game. It wasn't Breeze? It was more the scheme. Right. With Deshaun, it's more about him than it is the scheme. It is. It's too much on him all the time. What um, can they do to help him a little more? Yeah. Well, I just wish Billy O would steal some plays around football more yeah. you know just steal like you know the one thing I'll say with Cliff Kingsbury we didn't hit on that side of the ball I mean Cliff Kingsbury is just thieving it every week every time I watch them on film I go up oh, he stole that stole. play from Kyle up oh, he stole that play yeah. from McVay and all of a sudden he's gotten away from the air raid he's mm -hmm. got he's got Kyle Murray underneath the center he's doing play action passes because he's realized like I've kind of handcuffed myself in this air raid thing yeah I can do a lot of different crazy stuff I wish they would do just a little bit more on offense that way uh, and, you know, just to button it up with the, the Texans, J.J. Watt injury is going to be big for them. Their defense and their pass defense, anybody that's been listening to me the last few weeks, I've been telling you, it stinks. And now you don't have a guy like him to pressure the quarterback. Right. That's going to be an issue for them and might have to put more pressure on Billy O and that offense to put more plays in to realize, you know, we're going to have to out shoot out people more times than not in games. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe that'll be the impetus. Yeah, maybe it will. And maybe it will. Yeah. You know, that's what happens to coaches sometimes. You know, it's, it's like the, you know, the old thing, the backup quarterback gets in and 
you know, Andy Reid ran plays the other night where I want to go, man, if you ran these plays with Patrick Mahomes in the game, I mean, it would be, I'd be scared, but you don't call those, you know, but now it's, oh, I got to figure out easy ways yeah. for him to get the ball. And I, I don't understand that. I complained about that when Carson Wentz got hurt. So Nick, Nick Foles came in last year. You know, it's like the offense changed. Like, oh, we got to help Nick. He's not as talented as Carson. Well, Carson needs help, help Carson too, too. Yeah, right? right? I mean, Drew Brees and Tom Brady get help. Yeah. You know, like we're talking about. And that's yeah. not a knock on them. I'm just, that's what the good teams do. You right. got to help your quarterback. Can't always be them like, hey, you make it happen because you're awesome. And that's why we drafted you top 10. Yeah, okay, great. But sometimes the other teams got pros and coaches too that are right. going to stop that crap. We getting close to the old man? Oh, yep. Well, I got to do some business first, okay? You take care of some traffic. You know All me, right. but yes, this is the old man going to lead into the old man here, okay? The uh, Campbell's Chunky Chats, okay? I'm a big soup guy. I just ate some Campbell's soup, all right? Uh, delicious. I eat soup just about every day. Yeah? Yeah, I do. What's your favorite? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a plain Jane, just chicken noodle guy. Can't go you wrong. give me that, I can't go wrong, yeah. right? You know, plus with my nose spleen, I feel like it's good for my immune system, all those kind of things. But Campbell's Chunky Chats, okay? Now, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about something exciting I'm doing with Campbell's Chunky Soup. Throughout the rest of the season, I'll be sitting down with former NFL players as we discuss the many ways football is family right there's there's a lot of great hey football is family whether it's in the locker room or people in your life uh that were a part of your life growing up that helped you become a football player there's a million great stories around the nfl about that and i did my first interview with family my dad phil sims take a quick listen here and uh, see what we did the other day I came home one year, uh, I think it was my second year in the NFL, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I've been tearing it up in OTAs. Yeah. I was throwing touchdowns everywhere, and I'm going, Dad, I'm telling you, I'm going to be the starting quarterback. And we went out in the driveway and threw a few balls, and he looked at me and he went, are you going to throw it like that? <laughs> and I was like, damn, is there something wrong with my throwing? It's on target in a perfect style every time. Uh, it's not right. And, and he kind of kind of tweaks with me and fixes me. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. Your, your, your way is better. Okay, I'll, yeah, there, I'll listen to that. Yeah, there's no question. <laughs> Old man always knows. Oh, that, that, so there you go. And uh, if you want to hear the whole thing, uh, it's on NBC Sports' YouTube page. Special thanks to Campbell's Chunky's team for making it happen. Really, honestly, I enjoy interviewing my dad. Because I actually hear things that I don't always right? hear. You yeah. know, when he's your dad, uh, I, you know, sometimes they, they don't tell you all the goods. But we, we got into good stories. And that was true. It was going into my second year. I'm tearing it up. And, you know, I, I know Gruden's thinking about starting me. And, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm killing it every day in practice. And I, the last few days of practice, I just was just, it was touchdown passes galore. And I'm thinking, gosh, damn, I'm going to go home and show dad what I got. I'm looking good. And I threw about four footballs. He goes, you can throw like that? And I was like, damn, what the, what the, what the hell was wrong with that? I don't know. And, you know, and then he, he taught me a few things. And I went, damn, that does feel easier. And it just pops out of what my head. What did hand. he show you? What was the uh, you know, I can have the 10. And dad's on right now, so I know you listen. Hey, I, 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 had, I had the tendency at times to be too much of an arm thrower. Yep. I had a really flexible arm. I got big hands, as you know. Mm -hmm. So I would just kind of just say, like, ah, screw the rest of my body. I'll get it done with my hand and my arm and just get it in there and figure it out. And Dad, you know, would teach me, like, hey, get your front shoulder open to the backside or, mm -hmm. you know, get a little opposites between your shoulder and your lower body. And that's kind of when we got into Dad really teaching me a little bit more about quarterbacking and throwing and all that. So, hey, Dad, what's up? How are you? Hey, good to talk to Paul and yes. you today, son. And uh, it was fun doing the chunky uh, well, the, the Campbell's, Campbell's chunky soup, chats. I should say. Yes, yes, yes. I was going to say chunky Campbell soup, but what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, uh, it's true. They are chunky. They're, 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 well, they got yeah. that too, yeah. but I, I do want to do it again. I know you do. I told oh, the people okay. here, and they think you're crazy. I just let you no, know. No, I'm for not chunky crazy. Or just to come up and hang out. He like. wants to do it again for chunky and everything because he wants. He doesn't feel like he asked me enough questions. Mm. He wants. Yeah, like, I want to get into other things about you know, football, our family. Paul, I don't know how it is with your kids and everything. Uh, I'm sure it's as your they get older, it will turn. But you know. When we had dinner every night or whatever we did, we always talked about sports. Yep. And as time went on, it became oh, – it was every sport. Then as time went on, it became nothing but football, really. Right. And, and right. now that's all we ever talk about. You're right. right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I go, oh, Game 7 of the World Series tonight? Okay. 
it's Wednesday night. I guess there's no football on, so I'm I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, I'd just be turning back and forth just to to learn a little, do whatever, and 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 go from there. But yeah. yeah. So we we've been, we've been involved in football in so many aspects for so long mm-hmm. that. Hell, that's what we got in that's common. So that's about, what we yeah. talk about. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's, that's what... all I ever talked about with my dad. It was just a couple of days ago, the five, the five year anniversary of him passing away. So right. I missed talking to him about those kind oh. of Yeah, I hear you. But like now, as a dad to two sons, I think about him like, should we talk about stuff besides sports? Because that's all, that's all I ever bring up is their practices and games, and that's what we talk about right. and laugh about. But Maybe I should have had a conversation with my dad about something besides something other that. the Cubs. Well, we had some. Com- you could have conversations about school. We never and did. And if they're not doing well, you can threaten, uh, you know, threaten them or whatever, or do whatever yeah. you got to do. And then, as I do, as your sons get older, <laughs> knowing that everything comes in your life, when they go to school, you go up and ransack their rooms to see what's going on. Yeah. That's yeah, right. So. Doing that. yeah. 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 So he would. He would I bust think he in. Found some good stuff. In well, he would bust in. You know, I was on the straight and narrow then there those days. Yeah. He would bust in the room, like make sure, like, and I'd be. I, I was. Yeah. You know, I don't think Dad would argue. I was. A, I was a pretty good student growing up. Stop right there, yeah. Phil. Yeah. It's the second time I've heard that today. <laughs> but he said he was yeah, a good student this morning. in high school and also also <laughs> good his freshman year at Texas. Can, can you yeah, confirm? Yeah. Listen, that 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 is true. He was a good student. Student. It was easy for him growing up. But he was also it was also true. The older he got, the worse he got because <laughs> he, he, oh I don't know Paul. I think that's honestly I hate to say it. It's kind of common with I think a lot of athletes. No, it's true. Yeah, you know sure. your focus. You just go oh my gosh. You, you think your focus has got to be on one thing for your whole life, but it really doesn't. Right. And I even regret it. I go man. I wish I'd done more in school. Right. But, if you're you smart know, enough hey, to, to be a good we're all better. We're, we all think you know, genius is at the fact, which I always say, and right. hindsight is whatever, so it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. So, so uh, what's going on? Well, I mean, That's what we're gonna ask you. football, but, I, you know, I, have, I told the listeners, I have no idea what you're going to talk about. I don't either. You don't either. No, okay. hell, this is, this is the way it goes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, let's see. <laughs> I watched the Bears play the Chargers. Yeah. And – why? It, it's just, <laughs> it's it was torture, a catastrophe right? for right. everybody involved in the game, probably. Right. Uh, the Chargers failed to do things. The Bears, Trubisky, once again, it, it, you know, yes, he threw an interception. He fumbled. The interception, I think, or the fumble didn't lead to any points or anything. But, yes, he missed a pass or two. Was it a, just, would I look at the game and go, oh, he was awful? No, I wouldn't even get close to saying that. Once again, he leads them down there. It's in position to win the game. And then and a good throw to get them moving and a scramble where he gets out of trouble. Um, so there you go. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I hear it, it's killed Trubisky. Yeah, it is. Let's don't, let's don't get on the, you know, the place kicker, play calls, running the clock out when you got it. What were they, about the 19-yard line, 20? Yeah, so, yeah, somewhere in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah but right. I, I, I took this out of it. Um, what do you I'm think? not saying I pick up, but I, Trubisky was extremely mobile yeah. in the game. Really got outside. I thought he made a lot of really good throws. Yes, he did miss Taylor Gabriel. I think it was going across the field right. for a big play. Yeah, things like that. But damn, you know, one of my pet peeves about sports: let's quit judging it like it's perfect. Yeah, never gonna be. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so it wasn't perfect, but he bailed him out at the end, right. and. This is all we remember. You know, we always have these arguments with everybody. I heard you saying a little something earlier. You know, it's it's the team. There's more involved than just the performance of the quarterback. I know the quarterback's important. Oh, my God, do I know. Everybody on TV talks, ooh, the quarterback. That's all they talk about because they don't watch anything else. Or they yell at the coach because he made the wrong decision. Right, right. So, but, yeah, it, you know, I, I feel bad. I, I really do feel bad for Trubisky. Uh, I know what he's going through. I just saw an interview with him a few minutes ago. Boy, his attitude and everything, <clears throat> you know, it was pretty good. It was. It was, it was interesting to see it. I thought, well, that that says a lot about him. He's not one that's going to sit around and stress right. over what's happening. And uh, so that's just my first take of yeah. many things. And, and just, to, just you know, the fumble did lead to the touchdown. The interception led to no points. Um, the fumble led to the touchdown. Yeah, yeah the at fumble. The end of it, yep. Yeah, you know he scrambled so much, but you know even then I got to get him. Yeah, that that he just let the football get so far away from his body, and that's that's the way he's played for. What that's something that's easily corrected. And really, 
He's in his third year. That that, that has to be. You got to know when they're around you, man. You got to keep two hands in that ball at all times. Yeah, no doubt about so. it. All right. So just why we're on them? I mean, do you think they're salvageable, the Chicago Bears? I know you and I. I don't think we've even talked about them really, even in our own private conversations. What's your yeah, take on them? Yeah, not much. Not much. Are they salvageable? Yeah. Of course. I don't think. I just don't see the domination uh, of their defense that I did in years uh, last year. Right. You know, I, I, I don't. The pass rush. You know, the Chargers, their their offensive line is savvy. Phillip Rivers gets rid of the football, all those things. But it was almost a non-factor in the game. And then the fact that they just got have gotten crushed in the run game every now and then, things like that, I just it, it's not the same. Do you think they're the uh, worst they, team in that division, Phil? Um, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, if you made me take them in Chica- uh, uh, Detroit, I would take, I would take Chicago. Okay. I okay. think Detroit's still trying to – you know, man, they're in that tough stage. They're trying to really – they're tough. Uh, I think they know what they, they want to accomplish, but they're physically just not good enough yet to accomplish what their brains are telling them to do. I, I think they're a smart football team. I think he's really done a good job coach on Matt Patricia. But there's just not enough overall talent to, to get it done. Their quarterback is just not – he's fooling us a little. Yeah. Because he's so good, we're kind of mm-hmm. going, oh, the team's getting so much better. But the quarterback, I argue with people again, you know, oh, he hasn't won a big game and all that. I know. But surely to God, don't we all know that he is carrying his share of the load and more? I hope we do. Yeah. Right. Because I do. I know it. So. All right. Well, let me, let me, let me ask you this because I, I mean, what, what have you watched uh, as far as film wise? Because I got games I'm about to talk about, so I don't want you to like jump in on those. Well, I did that one, um, the game I just told you about. I watched the Bear game. Right. Um, Let's see. Uh, I did watch Kansas City Green Bay. I wanted to see it. You know what I noticed? I just realized, I go, boy. Right. um, You know, a lot of things. I thought, I heard you say it, and I thought you were right. I think Kansas City is trying to do different stuff. Uh, They had the... The, the Packers in some situations where they could have probably won the game yeah. if they could stop. Right. But, you know, they didn't stop Aaron Rodgers. Right. And, right. and I wrote down, wow, we take it for granted. I remember I wrote some notes just going, his throwing is so absurd that <laughs> just we've never seen anything like it. But it's and, – and this bothers me too. We just bunch te- – we bunch quarterbacks into two categories. What's their rating and what's their one-loss record? Right, right. I mean, oh, my gosh. I, it really – the great touchdown throw he had, well, you know, he had one on the first drive of the game. Yeah, the, the one where he threw the deep uh, post the, the down the middle. The crossover, the third nine. Yeah, right, the third nine. I mean, that was right. ridiculous, too. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what his wrist is made of, <laughs> right? but damn, is it flexible. <laughs> I, know. I know. And, and I've told you this story, but – Remember, did they play a playoff game? Uh, Atlanta played Green Bay in a playoff game. Yeah, the, the year they, they went, went to the Super Bowl. Bowl. They did. He went down to Atlanta in the divisional game because the, right. they were the number two seed, I believe, the Falcons, and he tore them apart. No, no, no. I'm talking about a couple of years when Atlanta went to the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they did in the NFC oh, they, Championship game. Oh, they killed Green game. Bay. Yes, they killed yeah. Green Bay. Yeah. So, my, you know, Matt was on the practice squad, our son. Right. My son. Yep. And <laughs> son. he couldn't wait. He won. Aaron Rodgers out there warming up. But he goes, you know, he doesn't even really warm up. He just kind of fools around, throws a couple. Like you, NBC did a good job of showing his warm up the other night, how he just goes across his face and flicks mm-hmm, him. Right. And he goes, I just want to say, and he goes, hey, Aaron, I'm Matt. He goes, hey, I know Matt, who you are. Good to see you. And he goes, they shook hands, and Matt goes, what the heck? Yeah. And his hand went like halfway up his forearm. Yeah. And his fingers it, are unreal long. Yeah. So that, of course, explains a lot that he can make these throws that he can. He's extremely limber. And I would say – I would say this might be as good a year throwing the football as I've ever seen him have. Yeah, wow. I've watched every throw. You know, I'm not bragging. I'm I'm not Ron Jaworski. Uh, you know, he retired. Uh, but I have watched every one of their games on tape and everything, TV, and uh, he's throwing the ball great. And, again, he just makes throws, and we just take them for granted. Oh, he's looking left. He doesn't move his feet or nothing. Right. He just turns his shoulders and throws an outcut to the right as four people are one foot away from him, you know, and you just go, yeah, oh, okay, that's a six-yard or eight-yard throw, and it's spectacular. Nobody nobody else, and I, let, me hear, let me say this, Yeah. 
nobody else yeah. can make those throws. Yeah, oh, you, okay. you got me. I got you. So th- th- I want to because I, I mean I'm you know I'm with you. I got you. All right, but what about the guy that was on the sidelines on the other side of the field that As night? I said, nobody else could make those throws. Yeah, yeah. With his okay. body in that position and being able he to be that accurate. He does it a different way. Mahomes is different. Right. He's, not, he's not the, the – his hand and his arm and all the other stuff we're talking about, he does it a little different than Aaron Rodgers. His is spectacular. Yes. But Aaron Rodgers can make throws that, that Mahomes cannot make. Yeah. So I yeah. I don't care what he hey I just just I don't know why it hit me watching the the game but I just wrote a bunch of stuff down going dang yeah I know it, it was just, dang we, we, it was lots of dang yeah. the whole game it's, that, it's, that's it that's it's all you can say yeah. and it's got to be incredible to play against but that's the way it goes it's almost hey, like you got any questions you want to ask man I, I mean, <laughs> things pop into my head listen to you all the time yeah. I, I don't want to cut you off because I'm enjoying it but yeah. it's almost like his release and his delivery has gotten even more compact. It's like you watch it and you're like, did someone cut 20 frames out yeah, of that? Yeah, right, like, right. And you don't see the arm go where the re- somewhere. Right. Yeah, where where is did the it? rest of it go? Yeah. Well, he can do it. He's really, you know, like I said, his warm-up that, y'all, uh, that I thought Chris Collinsworth showed, I love them showing his warm-up. I tell people about it, uh, quarterbacks, they don't believe me. And then the, a lot of them, the great thing is now they go online and go, oh, I saw what you were talking about. Right. You know, they find these things out. But it has gotten because he can just flick the ball. Right. You know, he doesn't need to rear back or anything. He, because of his hands, the limber, how limber he is, all that, he can just use, he can just do different things with the football than anybody I've ever seen. So, What's yes, the I think it's. That you, if you can use, like, you can watch him and say, someone else you're working with, say, watch Aaron do this. And we'll come back and work on that because his talent is so special. It's almost like you don't even want to tell somebody that to to imitate it. Yeah, well, you, no, but he does things. They're they're what it, fundamentally they're correct. That's right. why he's so great at what he does. You know, his fundamentals of all these off balance throws and everything are exactly the how you would teach kids to do it or anybody. Yeah, any mm-hmm. pro you'd like to you, you'd like to do that with. Gets, so. gets his shoulder turn. Always keeps his arm angle. Never lets his arm kind of break. It's always in that. T- that's why it looks like to you. You know, when someone says it's like a flick of the wrist, that yeah. usually means it's just because it's so perfect mechanically yeah. that it just pops off and their arm stays so tight and it's so flexible and he knows how to use his body the right way to where it looks like a flick of the wrist. But, I mean, that's what it is. And, you know, just to piggyback off of what Dad said, you know, and, Dad, I want you to tell the story because Dad, you know, when the end of Brett Favre's career, and I know you've said it on the podcast before, but at the end of Brett Favre's career, he was going up there to Green Bay, right? And you were going, man, I'm, I'm watching the greatest thrower I've ever seen in my life. It's the greatest thrower in the history. And it was Brett Favre. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, go ahead, you take it from there. Well, I was up there during training camp, and I'm standing talking to Ted Thompson, I think, on the sideline. And is it like a year later, two years later? How much? It, it's yeah. Aaron Rodgers' third year. Yeah, okay, okay. And, uh, you know, there was not great talk about his first two years, his practicing, his preseason games. And I'm standing there talking to him, but I really want to watch practice. And so I'm out of the corner of my eye. I'm trying to watch what they're doing. And I just went, wow, what a throw by Brett Favre. <laughs> I go, oh, that was Aaron Rodgers. And I go, that was unbelievable. What, what, what did he do? You know. And so he came over to the sideline, walked by me. I said, hey, Aaron. He goes, hey, Phil. And I said, man, you know, I don't know how to s- – don't take this the wrong way, but what did you do, man? You're, you're throwing the ball so different. And he goes – Oh no no! I'm not insulted. He goes, I just man, I just I just do what I feel. And he kind of gave me. I just decided to be more natural. This and that. And he got away from what he was taught to do in college. Right. And he got just got more limber, loose, all that. Just goes to this too, Paul. Here we all are all ex quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Don't anybody tell me. Oh, you just can't mess with somebody's motion. Yeah. That is the stupidest thing you can say. What do you can't? Oh. You can't mess with it. Yeah, Tiger Woods never takes any golf lessons from anybody. All baseball players don't ever listen to somebody about hitting. It's all natural. We just either you can do it or you can't. Right. I mean, shooters. Oh, don't let somebody teach you how to do the proper form. No, it's all just you either got it or you don't. How ridiculous and how stupid that is. And Christopher, you know, example. Paul, you know. Yeah. And if you don't change, you know what you are. Then you're dumb. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because in the league. I think every year you're in the league, you really should get better at controlling the football. Right. Right or wrong. Right. If you can. 
Well, if you can. You just got to work at it. Right. There was a quarterback, I'm not going to say his name, had a really good year. And he said to somebody else, man, I'm really – it's just, I'm throwing it better. And he goes, well, yeah, because you work at it this off season, Right. <laughs> and he goes, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. that there is are, the point. There so, aren't that many people, Phil, and tell me if I'm wrong, but, I mean, inside each facility, there are people that work hard and know the offense and know defense. How many people can really take someone who already throws it better than 99.5% of the people in the world? How many people can take that quarterback and tear down the motion and help him get better in a positive way. I mean, there well, you never have to many. tear it down. You know, you don't have to tear it down. You know, you can. They're pros, Paul. Okay, and, not and, tear it down, but I mean, help somebody who does it that well get even better. How many people really know it at that level? Well, I'm not going to answer that because it'll, it'll sound like um, you know, Mr. Nodal conceded. But you know, we know, you I don't know, think and Christopher knows. Well, I'll they're, say it's a low number. I mean, it's, it's low. It's, it's more. Than, it's less than one hand. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah, that's right. what I mean. It's right. less than five in football who know anything yeah, about that's throwing, right. throwing. A lot of the guys football. might be willing to say, "Yeah, I, I would love to get better at right. age 28." But who who's actually going to make me better than I am right now when it comes to throwing the ball? Yeah. Well, they all, everybody has their guy and does it and, and works on it. And, you know, we, I've seen Drew Brees change late in his career. You know, he kind of changed his motion. If you notice, it's gotten more compact. Yep. And, you know, actually, boy, the rest, I, I thought, I watched that game, and I thought Drew Brees had a little more pep on the ball than I've seen him have in a long time. So it, it, he, he threw the ball physically really well and had some good pop on it. And right. so that was interesting. But, yeah, you can you can fix people and and change them, and they're pros. And so when you change them, it doesn't take long. It's not like you're taking some kid in the seventh grade trying to make him do it right. Mm -hmm. You know, they're there for a reason because they have talent. And when you're a talented athlete, you can do what? You can mimic. Yeah, that's right. right. Oh, you're right. Okay, you're right. that's what it is. You that's, can mimic. Yeah, oh, yeah. you mean you want me to do this? Right. And after about five throws, I go, yeah, that's it. That was really easy. And you know that that's. Well, that's the way. It, that's the way it is. But everybody knows how to do it. They say, Supposedly. and I always say, "Show me." Yeah. And you know. Well, you only had one guy. You played 15 years. You only had one guy that ever taught you anything about throwing. I hey, listen. Who? They never said nothing to us about throwing. Hey, get the ball. Get a higher. Throw it higher. Well, well, okay, I'll hold the ball over my head and throw it from there. How's that? <laughs> high release, my butt. Well, that's a another thing. That's I, oh, he's got a good high release. Well, you know what? That's the if first really thing he changed high, about me when I was throwing. That means he probably doesn't throw it very well. <laughs> Is it your high release? First thing, Phil, we, we, you and I were playing catch, and you've done it with so many different people you don't remember, but I remember, and within like five minutes, and I won't use the word that you use because it's not really something we should say, but you said if, if you want to keep throwing those blank over-the-top balls, you can, but I'm going to show you how to do it the right way. Right. And <laughs> I, I, I had never had somebody rip me for releasing the ball high. I, right. I thought that was good. Yeah. I have a high release. Well, yeah. A every... couple minutes in, Phil right. was like, you got you got to cut that shit out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you are done doing that unless you want to just keep floating the ball out there. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen. Just think about the dynamics. Oh, let's hold the ball up above our head, or do I want it outside my shoulder a little bit where it's laying in my hand? Which one are you going to control better? Right. right. Oh, it goes across my hand, makes it spin. No, let's go from the top where your timing has to be absolutely magnificent. Yep. Because your room for error is almost zero. And and most of the time, you don't throw it hard. Why? Because you're afraid of where it's going to go. Right. right. Yes. And, any, and we all know, we were all quarterbacks, we all know our biggest fear is, and where we really have no confidence and can't even read a defense, when we're not controlling the football. Right. 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 Man, did I hate those days. Yeah, no fun. I dropped back. Where's that check down? I got to <laughs> find him. And yeah. then he come to the sideline. Hey, the, he was open. No, I thought he was covered. I, I, you know, I think I saw the defender, you know, make up some lie. <laughs> <laughs> so we've all been there, but I didn't know why I got into this today. But no, no that's all right, it, because we're talking fun. about Aaron Rodgers in Kansas City. I and mean, you know, I think we came to the determination that they don't win that game unless he did some crazy yeah. crap. Uh, all right, last thing, because we got to go. Yeah, I, wanna, I want a quick answer. Okay. Who wins, Patriots or 49ers right now? Who wins right now? Oh, baby, it's a good one, isn't it? Mm, it is. Yeah. It really, really is. Yeah, I know. It, I did watch the 49ers, the tape of their offense. I didn't really watch – well, I did watch a little of their defense. Yeah, I did watch their defense because I wanted to talk about them yesterday on Showtime. We really didn't do it. Um 
I think I got one or two lines in. I, I, I watched. That's what it was. I watched the damn game all the way through both sides. I got two pages of notes, and I think I said uh, two lines. Yes. <laughs> but um, man, I, I, I think I'll take. Mm, that is really tough. I think I would take the 49ers in a really close game. Yeah, it's it's tough. I know. I started off the show. We started talking about it back and forth. I said I think it's the 49ers hard. are better. I gave the Patriots the edge just because of history. Of history, but I don't know if I truly believe that. I, the, I, yeah. the thing that gets me, what well, only it's so close. 49ers, they both get healthy and all that. The 49ers, just their overall team speed. Yeah. Uh, their diverse running. I, I just, and you know that front four. It's real, yeah, and and all that. So that that's just another thing that that you have to deal with. And the Patriots do a great job of dealing with their offensive line and protecting it. But the speed behind the 49ers front four is is really good too. Right. So that then it kind of negates, you know, the the Patriots just like to oh screen this. You know, we do all this all the time. It was just an orchestrated, perfect, you know, whatever drive, you know, right away. That's what they do, yep. and. and uh, so, but I, I think I would. The 49ers are really. The last couple of weeks, I've paid more attention to them than before. Very impressed, and I would take them in a close game. Yep. All right, you the man. That Dad. wasn't very quick. But, no, you know, it wasn't quick. It was. You made up for that two lines you got in Showtime and, and put thirty on in this one. So don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, good. you know that's right. <laughs> I, I think it's okay. I, I want to get into that. All right. It's all there though. You guys have a great day. Yep. All right, Dad. All right, I'll see, see you, man. Be good. See you, Phil. See you, Dad. Yep. All right, there we go. See, I, talk, I see. I know. I could talk mechanics with him forever. Well, yeah. I get whispered in my ear. Move on. Yeah, move on. Move on. I know. <laughs> well, he'll keep going if we don't stop him so, too. I, so that's that's good. Good. Good that you moved on. But let's um because he was just talking about we were talking to Patriots and yep. Browns. Let's let's go right to that. I All think right. that makes makes the most sense. Just diving in there right away. And you've got three plays that you really want to. Yeah, focus well, I think I think there. Were, you know what? I think we're ended up talking about four plays because we might as ex- well explain all four, okay. uh, all three turnovers that happened yep. right in a row by the Cleveland Browns, and then uh, really what I thought was the game, probably the next game-changing play of the football game is that long screen pass. Right. The game was 17-10, third yep. quarter. Cleveland had kind of got back the momentum of the game and settled in, mm-hmm. and then that screen pass happened, and they never had control again. And that was those are the ones I'd like to talk about. For let's sure. hit that one last after yeah. we hit the three okay. Cleveland turnovers. So let's begin with the Nick Chubb long run, 44-yard run, incredible play to strip him uh, down near the goal line. Yeah, well, and, and I think the the big thing there. Okay, so and it we, was Cleveland was, was trailing 10 nothing. 10 nothing. And Chubb's got, they're going to go toss right, okay? And I believe it was shotgun. Chubb's to the right of the Baker Mayfield. They got the bunch that you were just talking about, the, yeah. the Saints being in so much. Mm-hmm. And they run 98 bunch crunch. Because why? Because we see New England, they got people standing up, all these different guys in between the tackles. I don't know who's coming or who's dropping. So let's just block them all down right. and toss it outside and let our stud running back make something happen once he gets out on the edge. Well, uh, he does. He makes something happen out on the edge. They kind of stretch it out to the right because of the toss. Danny Sheldon is really, it's his gap ultimately that uh, gets exposed, but his gap has now moved like, you know, six or seven yards to the left, and he can't quite get there, and I don't expect him to always. He's 350 pounds, and mm-hmm. he only gets an arm on him. Nick Chubb, run, you know, uh, breaks through the arm tackle, makes a, makes a move on, I think it was Dante Hightower to make him miss on an arm tackle, and then turns on the afterburners. And the big thing is, and more than anything, the star of the play is the guy who stripped him. Jonathan Jones, right. and why he's a star is not because of the strip, but because of what he, the hustle. So when Nick Chubb breaks that second tackle of Dante Hightower, the left or the, the Wyatt Teller, number 77, I think he's the right guard, I can't even remember right now, it doesn't matter. He knocks Jonathan Jones to the ground. Jones is on the ground, and Chubb is 10 yards down the field and about to turn on the afterburners going, oh, I can take this to his house. Jonathan Jones pops up, yeah. and he flies down the field in pursuit, and Nick Chubb just kind of loses awareness of, like, just who's around me. I think he's just going, I'm going to run hard and just till it's end. No, you, you know, look around. Brace yourself for something that happens. But either way, he doesn't do that. Jonathan Jones strips the ball, 
and that was a huge chance for Cleveland to get back into the ball game. Mm-hmm. At the very least, it's going to be 10 to three after that drive. I mean, you sure know, maybe we get to 10, 10 to seven, seven. Yeah, right? They're thinking, sure. So you know, yes, but at the very least, it's going to be 10 three and calm things down a little bit. Mm-hmm. But instead, it's turnover, Patriots ball, and they, all the momentum's on their side, and here we go. So many dozens of plays like that throughout yes. the last 15 years with the Patriots, and people reference, oh, it's the details, oh, and they're yeah, so well-coached, right. and they hustle. Oh, or it's luck. It's luck. Right, right, yeah, right. right. Yeah, my ass is luck. So right. you, you've been in the building. Yeah. Is this, is this taught via film, like, like once a week? Do they show these hustle kind of plays to everybody? This is what we want to do. Is it practice on the practice field? get up from getting knocked down, sprint 30 yards downfield and strip it? Like, how much of that is something that that they've been shown on film yeah. and practiced throughout the week? It, well, that's the beauty of them. It's it's never those little details that get lost through most teams mm-hmm. in football as the season goes along. Oh, it's week 15. We're, you know, we don't talk about that anymore. We're in the grind, you know, the grind of the season. New England never gets away from it. So, I mean, first off, hustling, mm-hmm. if you don't hustle, Right. You're going to the bench. I mean, there's just he doesn't care, Bill. Do they show examples from other teams? Well, though? he'll show more examples if you if you're the one not if you're loafing in practice or the, he'll get called out. You know, you know, I mean I, I you know, Jamie Collins got traded to the Browns because he stopped setting the edge in the run game. And Bill was like, No, that's like the number one rule of the defense. You broke it like five times in three weeks. He was like, I'm out of with you. You're right. out of here. Right. You know, a lot along he was asking for money. That's the way they are. But the other thing is and I've never seen anything like this either. They work on ball protection and stripping the ball like twice a week. It's like one of the first periods of practice mm-hmm. where, oh, here's the offensive guys. They're holding the ball. And other offensive guys are kind of like jogging along next to you. And, you know, they're, they want you to keep punching it different ways so you can get used to it. And, you know, holding the ball properly is still being talked about in week 10. Like, wow. this is how you hold the ball. This is where your fingers go around the ball. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go. You know, the defense is on the other field. They're working on how to strip the ball and the proper ways to do that. So it is not luck. It's always it's just part of their DNA. And that's why they're amazing. Another turnover, also yeah. trailing 10 nothing. The Browns were Baker Mayfield shovel pass that was intercepted. Yeah, right. So they get a stop uh, after the, the fumble. They get yep. the ball back. Disaster. So this is the third fumble. And we'll go back. I, I want to go back to the first fumble, too. We're going to go back to that uh, in a second. So this is the third fumble of three plays in a row. Okay. And they're trying to run like, you know, uh, basically, they want to give the ball to Jarvis Landry, who's basically on a wing on the left, like a yard outside the left tackle. Okay, and they want to fake the chub, pitch it forward to uh, Jarvis Landry, and there's a, a pulling tackle in front of him, mm-hmm. and he's going to follow him up there like it's a guard or tackle pull play that the running back gets. But it's a creative way to kind of stress the linebackers and do that. The problem has nothing to do with Baker Mayfield or Jarvis Landry. The problem strictly here goes to the offensive line. Okay, left guard Joel Bentonio and the left tackle, McCray, okay, they need to make a switch call in this. And so let me paint a picture picture for everybody. Baker Mayfield's in the shotgun, and um, Nick Chubb is next to him. And now you got Joel Bentonio at left guard, McCray at left tackle, and Lawrence Guy is on the, on the left edge of the tackle, on the left edge, so his outside shoulder. He's almost splitting the difference between the tackle and Jarvis Landry. And he's going to pull. You're going to pull the guy who's blocking the guy who's a foot away from the guy you're going to give to the ball? Doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem right. Right. Now, so this is where you make the switch call. There's nobody over Joel Bentonio. Hey, McCray, switch, 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 or whatever their code word is. You know, I don't know, vice versa. Who, who the hell knows? But you make the switch call because Bentonio has no threat over him, so he's free to pull. Let him be the puller. Let McCray make the block on the guy that's there, basically right in front of him, like I said, shaded just straightly, you know, a little bit on the outside, to cause the stop disaster. Yeah. So I don't know, again, and I don't know these things because I'm not in the meeting, I would think there's a call that has to be made by the O-line. Well, it, every, Unless everyone has. Everyone, everyone has that, you yeah. would think. Unless maybe on this play, that it would, this was just block it how you see it. Yeah. But to me, if that, it was block it how you see it, that's stupid. 
And then I'd go to the coaching staff and go, man, you're asking Joel Bentonio to make a back block on a guy that's like four yards away. Yeah. And he's 310 pounds and pretty athletic. Like, oh, yeah, I'll just stop him in his tracks, coach. He won't go anywhere. No problem. So that just wasn't realistic to ask. And I got to think that the play was made to have communication there up front. And Lawrence Guy just went, whoa, the guy in front of me is leaving. I'm just going to keep running upfield. Right. And, nice. oh, wait, the guy that they're tossing the ball there is now I'm running into him. And, you know, disaster happens and 17-0. So I, I, I was going to ask, right, yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. gonna ask you if you had a bigger problem with the way Baker Mayfield executed the play or with the play call. Yeah. But it sounds like it was with the design of the play up front not the coach. No. Not the quarterback. I get the play, and I get, I mean, Baker Mayfield is, he's, he, th these are plays where he's not even supposed to worry about that. I mean, he's not even thinking like, oh, I mean, this is a bang, bang. I get the snap. I, oh, who? It's like hot potato. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Go. So he's not like sitting there thinking like, I got to read something or do right. any of that. You the know what I mean? Pass, it's not like you make a decision. Yes. Yeah. You've worked it all week in practice and training you camp. Ball, you you've done it. it. You yes. get it. You yeah. pitch it. Like right. you were supposed to block it, you know, the right way here. And they didn't do that. And so that was stupid. And then I just want to get back to the first fumble mm -hmm. to start the game. That gets returned for a touchdown and they're down 7 nothing because of this. I mean... So the first fumble, it's uh, N N Chubb, again, has the ball. He's going right. He's got the left guard, Joel Bentonio, pulling to the right. Okay, he's going to kick out Kyle Van Noy. There's a hole there. But this is where Kyle Van Noy and these Patriot linebackers are good. Most teams, when they would see that, the, the linebacker would brace himself and be like, all right, I'm just going to take him on, and we'll, we'll see if I can stop him right there. Well, New England, and I don't know what their phrase is there on the defensive side of the ball, but in like Tampa would have been like, shoot your gun. Mm -hmm. Like you see the guy coming, don't just sit there and like wait for him to block you. Attack him. And that's what Van Noy did to cause the first fumble. He really just goes, oh, I'm vulnerable here. They're coming to kick me out, and there's going to be a hole inside of me if I get kicked out. So when he saw the design of the ball, he attacked the pulling guard. And he ran right at him and said, I'm going to knock your knees out. Mm -hmm. And he knocked his knees out, and his feet flipped up in the air, and it kicked the ball out of Nick Chubb's hand. And then Dante Hightower picks it up and touchdown, and oh, the ghosts are back. And it's, you know, you're haunted in New England, right. which you are. You better right. watch out playing those <laughs> up there. They're going to get all the breaks because they're good and they're smart, and those fans are brutal, and mm -hmm. they're, you're in your head before the game even starts up there. Right. And that's why it's awesome to be up there and play there. But... Yeah, that play was made by Kyle Vinoy, one of the MVPs of that team this year. Him, Jamie Collins, Stefan Gilmore, they've just stood out above the rest, let alone a lot of other good players. But, you know, as you know, really hard to beat New England when you turn the ball over three consecutive plays right. and you're down 17 nothing. Aside from the turnovers. Yeah, you yeah. broke those down well. Right. What would you think of Baker and the Browns' offense? <sighs> Underwhelming. You know, so... So I'm a little disappointed, and I'm going to go back to a little bit with like what Odell Beckham Jr. said a little, all right? I think he thought they were going to attack him a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I think they relied on, like, oh, our scheme will get people open. And I think it could have been a game, one of, man, we got one-on-one. -on -one. It's Jarvis versus J.C. Jackson, and it's, it's Odell versus Gilmore. Like, let's just work the matchup a little bit. Let's not always try to, like, design the perfect mm -hmm. play. Not against New England. They're going to stop a lot of your plays that you really like to do. That's what they're genius at. Right. But, you know, yeah, Baker, it's still not smooth. It's still some off-target passes. It's still some jumpiness in the pocket. But really, other than those three plays, like, I just like to, like, clarify this because I want to just – I'm going to talk a little bit about the Pats. Like, the, the, the Browns belong on the field with them. They were not outclassed. I wasn't like, oh, wow, they're getting killed here. No, I would tell you they won most of the battles. If they we, hung if, in there. They hung in there. If I had to grade the game, I would probably tell you that Cleveland won more plays than New England. Then how come they only had 13 points? Yeah, well, because I know the, the turnovers. The turnovers were huge. Besides definitely. those three. Yeah. I, you know, I just think it was um, because of their down 17 nothing. They weren't able to kind of stay with the run game. They had to do some more drop back pass and hold the ball and do things like that. Protection failed, things like that. And they're playing a good defense. Right. I mean, that was a game if they were going to win it, it was going to be like 20 to 17. That was the kind of game it was going to be. You know, so I didn't expect them to go in there and, you know, win a game 30 to 27 against New England. Right. So we were going to lose some plays. Um, 
But yeah, hey, Odell, he dropped. He dropped. I think I want to say two passes where I go, yeah, you know, hey, they were tough. But you're Odell Beckham Jr. Got to catch it. I don't know what else you want me to say. Mm -hmm. You know, and I also want to look at Baker and go, man, there's a few plays like, you know, guys are open or you just got to throw a better ball. Like uh, all of that. Uh, but but more than anything, it's just mistakes on both sides of the ball more than anything. And um, then if we go over to the defensive side of the ball, let's get to that screen play yeah. with James White. I mean, to your point, yeah. to your, your many points, like it was a pretty They, they were 17-0, now it's 17-10. So it's 17-10. Right. About halfway through the third quarter. Yep. They have the Patriots backed up in a third down and 10. Yes. How did they get so successful on that, on that screen pass where it went for? Right. Let's see. 60, was it? Or what, what, 59 what was it? yards. 59 yards. 59 yards. Yeah. What so, happened on that play? All right. And this is this is like a little like we talked about. With, it's literally you've got them where you want them. you got them where you want them. The yeah. momentum's on their side. They're kind of whooping them up front. Yeah. Brady knows he's getting whooped up front. So he's like, he's conscious of like, oh, I got to get the ball out of my hand, you know, because he doesn't want to get sack fumbled or anything like that. Hey, the Patriots O-line, is, it's not special this year, as, as we all know. You know, they're struggling. And there's a lot of plays, man, they get their ass whooped. I mean, I don't know any other way to say it. What saves them more times or not is they run plays into the correct looks and they're schematically taught the right way. And even when they kind of lose their battles one-on-one -on -one up front, because it's the right play against the right defense and all of those things, it helps. Mm -hmm. But to get back to the point, sorry. They were good enough on one play, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you get to yeah. this point. On, yeah. on one of Edelman's touchdown receptions, I think yes. it was his second. Right. He ran an under. He's not open in the initial window. Right. He keeps going, not open there. Yeah. And was able to break it back the other way, improvising. Like, the O-line was good enough, and Brady was nim nimble enough on, on, on that, that play. play. Yes. Yeah. But that was a three-man rush, I believe, too. So to you ought that, to be able to block through. Yeah, you're, yeah, you should. But, but yes, I, I hear you. And, and again, you know, it's, the O-line is so well taught there. It's just the first year they don't have, they don't have really good talent up there. Right. And that's going to be something interesting to watch. But on that specific play, it's third and ten. And, hey, when you play New England, just like we were talking about the Saints, the <laughs> you plays are the number one things you've got to worry about in the game. Because, like, as Dad was saying, like, the first drive of the game, I mean, it's, it's just one – Game plan, oh my gosh, they got them. Oh, it's a screen here, it's a screen there. It's, you know, it's this perfect run against this defense. It's all these type of things that get them going, and that's what good offenses do. That's what Shanahan does and Peyton and McVay. They all do that kind of stuff. But so now it's third and ten like we're talking about, and it's going to be a three-man rush once again, mm -hmm. okay? So it's three down linemen, and there's two linebackers. Or no, there's one linebacker, Schobert. And then to hear Whitehead, not to hear Whitehead, the other Whitehead, 35. Hold on, I gotta figure out his name. I'm sorry, I got too many names in my head. What? Yep, I got it. It's 39. He's the guy that got cut by the Packers last year. White hair, Just Whitehead. Go with numbers. Either way, he's 35. Yeah. Okay, and he's their third safety. He's down over the guard, Jermaine Whitehead. Thank you very much, Pete D. And they're standing right over the guards, like we might blitz, right? So they play, they're playing man-to-man. -man. They're going to play robber coverage. You know, one safety is going to go deep. The other one's going to play the middle of the field to stop Julian Edelman over the middle mm -hmm. or whoever it is because New England loves to attack that part of the field. And New England calls the screen. So now here's James White who sneaks out of the backfield to the right. Well, the guy, he comes across. He's on the left of Brady and comes across Brady to go there. Well, Schobert's got him man-to-man. -man, but because he's up there at the line of scrimmage, he gets caught up in the wash. And by the time he gets over there, it's too late. And they already got blockers in front of him. And now the ball is coming to White, and the linemen are there. Yeah. And now he, he sees it. He's like, oh, crap, they got it. And he's running. But by the time he realizes James White's already caught the ball now and there's somebody on him, and now it's him one-on-one -on -one with one guy. He makes a miss, and he cuts it back across the field. And that's that. So it's basically one, one player. It's, it, on that play, it's one player. They yeah. called the right play against the right defense. Now, and that's where New England's master on. Now, Brady, there was two plays called because Brady gave the old, he pointed yeah. to his head, kill, kill, kill. Mm -hmm. So they had something else called. And then when he realized, ooh, it's this defense, Josh told me all week to kill it to this play. And he got to the right play, of course. They executed the right way and really ultimately ended up being the backbreaker because, like you said, a few plays later is when Brady scrambles and throws right. a touchdown pass to Julian Edelman and makes a 24-10. And momentum was never captured uh, on that side of the ball by, or, uh, by the Browns again. So on a third and long situation against this version of the Patriots, yeah. what they're doing right now, yeah. 
what's what's the best call Ooh. that Cleveland could have made? Yeah, well, I, I think the I, I have actually not a lot of issues with the call they made. My big thing would be you're playing a team that's got creative screen game mm-hmm. to where you, you know in those instances you got to be like I would want space on my linebackers. Let your let your linebackers stand in the middle of the field at their normal spot to maybe even take away Brady's thoughts of throwing the ball down the middle if they had something like that. Mm-hmm. But then it does give them room to react. You know, and I know what they're trying to do there. You know, Steve Wilkes, the D coordinator of the Browns, he's trying to stress the protection out to help them rush. You know, he's trying to make the guard stay home to where Miles Garrett doesn't get help coming off the edge and he can just get a one-on-one rush or whatever it may be. But within doing that, yes, they called the right play, maybe having a feeling through their game plan that, ooh, when they mug these guys, we can, we can screw them here and kind of pin them inside to where they can't get on the edge to stop our running back. That's how brilliant New England is, and that's kind of what happened there. So I have no problem. Really, the game plan overall by Cleveland on the defensive side of the ball Good. That was phenomenal. Mm. I mean, I really did. They did about as good as they can do. Their front four did great in the run. They hung in there. They made Brady and the, the pass game work. Um, you know, I, and you didn't know the scoreboard of this game. You I know. Listen to the, to the I know. 8, 10, 12 minutes we're talking about. Yeah, it. right. You'd think it was a one point game or Cleveland won. Well, I mean, it, 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 you know, ultimately, it probably should have been that type of game. Mm-hmm. I mean, hey, the Pats had 318 yards of total offense, the Cleveland Browns had 310. You know, the Pats averaged 4.8 yards per play. The, the, the Browns averaged 5.3. The Browns ran for 159 yards. The Patriots ran for 79, you know. But it's the turnovers and then getting in the hole is exactly the way the Patriots, oh, gosh, you're in the hole 17. Right. Have you seen our secondary? You're going to yeah. try to throw it every play now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, good luck. Okay. <laughs> and that's what leads to 159 yards of total pass plays. So they never really got to assert themselves and put New England in a pressure situation Mm -hmm. where I thought like their offense could maybe give New England's defense some issues because you do have to be scared of playing Odell and Jarvis man-to-man too much and those things and early on they didn't play a ton of man-to-man but then when they got in the flow of the game and I think they get a feel for okay I think the play period of the game is over where we've seen their game plan specials here they're getting back to the meat and potatoes you know, Bill's got them coached up on that stuff, and they were all right. over it. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great way to put a personal, recent face on. We hear details, and they're so well coached. Four plays. Yeah. Four plays, the difference between, between these two teams. It ended up being a, a two-touchdown difference. One linebacker not making a play on, yes, on the screen. Exactly. One defensive back chasing the guy down, causing the fumble. Right. Um, it's football. That's the NFL. It was that close. It is. It's that close. And, and really, you can go. we can go to – the, the, it's, the Browns are going to look back at their year because mm-hmm. they're probably not going to the playoffs now, and they're going to look at the Seahawks and go, man, there's, we, dom- we really controlled that game, right. and there's three plays that we screwed up in that game. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to look at you know, a number of games. You know, the, the Rams game at the end, they screwed up a bunch of stuff there. So their youngness is showing, their immaturity, all the things we wondered if they could gel together. Plus, they're having a, we're at, they have a coach that's in the same boat with them. Right. And you know, that, that doesn't help the situation out either. So, but we'll talk about it more later. But I, that Ravens Patriots game Sunday oh, night, that's going to be a good right. one. Yeah. It is. It's going to be a good one. All right, let's go Eagles. Eagles. Eagles fly. Right. Eagles fly. Eagles 31, Bills 13. Yep. Again, kind of like the Cleveland New England game. It was close for a long time. Right. Closer than the scoreboard made it look. Definitely. That's the first thing you need to say. It was closer than the scoreboard yeah. looked for sure. Let's go to the Miles Sanders 65 yard touchdown run. Yeah. Third quarter. Start of the third quarter. Philadelphia was only up 11-7. Yep. Second down eight from their own 35. Yep. And it's uh, Carson Wentz and shotgun. Yep. Split backs, yes. right? Yep. Miles Sanders to his left. Jordan Howard to his right. right. They basically are running a play that's like, it's um, almost like zone blocking to the right, but it's a design cutback. So now Wentz is in the shotgun. The line, line everybody but the left tackle the, the left guard, the center, the right guard, the right, they're all kind of going zone blocking towards the right. So everybody's kind of moving in harmony to the right side. Now Jordan Howard, who's on the right of Carson Wentz, he runs up and attacks the weak side linebacker through the – Star on that play. So there's a star on that play. Through the, through, through the hole between the left guard and the left tackle, he goes on there and there's Matt Milano. Went and got him. So he went and got him. And, I mean, that's Jordan Howard's physical, as we saw even just the way he runs the ball. Yeah. And then Miles Sanders, of course, has the speed. So Carson Wentz gives the ball to Miles Sanders. He kind of gets it, and it makes it look like a little – like he might veer to the right and follow the O-line and then comes back – 
you know, left to that design, where the play is really designed to go. No, it's simple. And really, Tony Dungy and Rodney Harrison, uh, they were all over it on Sunday Night Football, and, and uh, there's nothing to disagree with. I mean, when I, when I watch the film, it comes down to one thing. You know, they schematically were in the right place, the, the Buffalo Bills. They, this, this should not have been a big play. It should have been a five-yard gain. But the real issue is Matt Milano, number 58 here. Because on the play now, Matt Milano, like we're saying, Jordan Howard's coming downhill to block him. To Matt Milano's right is Micah Hyde. Mm -hmm. Micah Hyde's there to be the guy when, if they pull a lineman or do a backside block like they did with Jordan Howard, you know, an extra gap forms within that. Because now an extra player's on this side of the ball, and because there's a left and right of that player, there's an extra gap. So Micah Hyde's there to be that extra gap guy. Matt Milano does what we call wrong shoulders it. He wrong shoulders it. And I'm going to stand up. You ready for this, John McDonald? It's my only stand-ups of the day. And usually when I say that, I jinx myself and stand up one more time. <laughs> but he really is like here. Okay, Jordan Howard's coming at him, right? Micah Hyde's right here. And he now, now uh, Miles Sanders is, is kind of attacking him right here, right? He takes it on like this. Okay, so here's Miles Sanders coming to Matt Milano's inside shoulder, and he takes it on with the, that inside shoulder like this to do that, and that's the wrong shoulder. So now he has help to this side. We don't need you over there. You needed him to take it on and be here to keep the left arm free to then maybe make the tackle, or if you don't make the tackle, you get an arm on him and you slow him down and people are gonna rally and it's gonna be a 10, ga 10 yard gain or a 12 yard gain. But because he wrong shoulders it and does this, now Micah Hyde, he's seeing it, but he's going, oh damn, I can't get over there because you're in the way and you're getting blocked too. Right. So Miles Sanders just gets a free shot and he goes right up the field, 65 yard touchdown, and that game was never the same, really, no, from that standpoint on. Yeah. Didn't, didn't the center also go out and get a linebacker really well? He did. As well as Howard did. He did. I think Kelsey, Kelsey, so that was like the zone blocking. Kelsey's yeah. so phenomenal at that. Yes, he goes up and gets Tremaine Edwards or Edmonds at the time. And that's where he's amazing at getting the second level. But that is, that's part of the zone blocking scheme. And I mean, as far as centers go, he's as good as it gets at going to the second level. That was, he's amazing. That was textbook for center getting right. out and a running back getting out, getting into a linebacker and right. eliminating him from a play. That's that no, play it's not as easy. Good as it gets. It's as good as it gets. Yes, blocked perfectly, really, from that standpoint. I mean, it, it should have been a 10 yard gain, but because Matt Milano wrong shoulders it, it right. becomes a 65-yard game. Besides that play, yeah. the Eagles in general right. and their run game on yeah. Sunday in Buffalo. Which yeah. Um, I mean, I'm excited about so many things I saw with the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, one, they still need Deshaun Jackson back. Mm -hmm. They do. They need that, that one guy, and I, I'm sick of saying it, and you, everybody else out there, you know it, because they got nobody that scares you. But, man, they got back, and just look at the first drive. Look at when they took the lead in the football game. They got back to a little bit of like underneath the center, running the ball straight downhill. Stop with this shotgun, east and west bull crap. I'm so sick of it. So they, they probably did more of that because of the, the weather was poor. Uh, yes. So windy. I think that's probably so forced them to do it. Maybe now they're in a meeting thinking, boy, that, that, was, that would be good even if it's nice outside. Well, I hope, I, yes, I hope so. You know, uh, and, and some of, one of the things I wrote in my, my notes here with this game in general is, you know, um, I, I wrote, I feel like the Eagles think they're the Chiefs sometimes. And with, the, with formations? You did. The play. formations, just shotgun, we're going to throw it every play. And, you know, oh, our back's coming out on yeah. wheel routes and all these things. And uh, I, I just wrote, the problem is you're not. You're not the Chiefs. The strength of your offense and the Philadelphia Eagles is your size and physicality. You don't got Tyree Kill and Kelsey and Sammy White. When you do, then you can play this way. But mm -hmm. for right now, you don't f have them. So <laughs> don't do it. Like, they're playing a game that I don't think suits their team. And that's what's frustrating to me. That's why, because I kind of like the Eagles. But, you know, like, if you break down the Eagles and look at their offensive line, okay, Kelsey, we talked about it, athletic. He's 6'3", 295. Not necessarily really big. But he's one of the best centers in football, and he blocks like he's bigger than 295. But then you get into the rest of the group. I mean, we talk about um, Brandon Brooks, okay? Guard, 6'5", mm -hmm. 325. Okay, Andre Dillard, who filled in, he's 6'5", 315. You know, he's filling in for, for um, big Jason Peters, who's 6'4", 330 when he's in there. Lane Johnson, a right tackle, 6'6", 320. Okay, you got Suamolo, who's 
303 pounds. Vitai, Vitai Vali Vati Vitai, whatever the hell, I can't say it. He's 320 pounds. I mean, this is when this is what they're built to do. They are built to overpower you, and they just get too obsessed with the pass game at time. So I yes, I think the weather did force it their hand yeah. a little. Yeah. Um, but I would like to see more of this. I think this would be playing to the strength of their team, especially with no Deshaun Jackson. And they have two backs that clearly, I mean, yes. we, we didn't know how good they were. But yes, they're but those not. Those two backs w would go very well with that mentality and that offense. They line. are like bats out of hell. They yeah. want to go downhill and smash your face. And that's what they're made to do, too. You're right. You know, they're not made to, like, go east and west and be, like, Dalvin Cook-ish or anything like that. That's not what they are. And Dalvin Cook doesn't do that either. I don't even know why I'm using him as an example. Right. But they're not jitterbug types. These are guys that you want to go, they're going to run downhill aggressive, aggressive. In the fourth quarter, linebackers and safeties are going to get sick of hitting them. Mm -hmm. And they're going to break ta tackles and wear people down. So, And their pass game is just not special. Right. Not, not only do they not have anybody scared of, but... They have just some concepts sometimes where I go, it's just too repetitive. Yeah. It's, it's the third quarter, and I've seen this play six times Almost already. Like they, they believe too much in Carson Wentz. I, and it's, it's so much on him. I guess. He would probably raise his hand and say, help. That, that sounds good. Help, please. I would love to throw it 20 yeah. times a game yeah. instead of 35. Yeah, I, I, I think they got to start playing to that strength. If they really want to be the Super Bowl team that they think they are, and that I still think they are too, because I thought this was the best game they played all year. I did. And you're right. The score was misleading. It really wasn't 31 to 13. Right. You know, Buffalo with the fumble, they missed a, they couldn't kick a field goal because the weather got so bad at one point. They got down close. They had to go for it on like yeah. a fourth and eight or nine. Um, but not only the offense, and the last thing I'll say about this, their defense played their best game of the year too. Fletcher Cox, he was plays up left and right. Mm -hmm. Jalen Mills and Ronald Darby being healthy at corner, it changes their defense. You know, now Jim Schwartz can be creative with things he does in the front seven. He won't be afraid to play man-to-man. -man. Uh, so I think there was a lot of positives. I thought it was the best their defense looked physically as far as speed and physicality all year long. They had some really dominant periods yeah. in the football game. Oh, best game offensively, best game yeah. defensively. Yeah, I mean, let's see. see. We'll see. see. On it. Yeah, let's, let's see. spend just a little bit of time quickly. Uh, oh. Steelers, Dolphins, you know the one play. Second quarter. Almost to halftime. Pittsburgh's trailing 14 to 3. It's third and 20 from the Miami 45. They bring eight. They rush eight, play straight man in the back. The dumbest play of the week. I, I would say beyond the week. Beyond the week, maybe the year. Has there been a dumber play of the year? I, I, I don't know. What it's, are they doing? Like, I'm sure you spent time thinking about it. Yep. Uh, it's what shocking. What could they possibly be thinking? It's shocking. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. I want to get to it here on film, too, so we can almost just talk about it as if we it was, watch it. While you're looking for yeah. I mean, if it was on the 25, right. you could say, okay, maybe it's a little too aggressive way to get him out of field goal position. Yep. I would maybe understand that. They're on the 45. I know. So There's no rationale. I think you're... I think you're thing you're saying there, there, though, it was their rationale, and it's wrong. It's the wrong rationale. They're on the 45. It's third and 20. Yeah. I think Brian Flores had a a Brownsville, Brooklyn moment where he went, F these guys, and I'm sick of them, and he went full meathead. Jeez. And he was going, I'm not going to let them get a free 10 yards and kick a field goal before the half. I mm -hmm. really think that was – that's the only logic I can think of. He's thinking, I got a 14-3 lead. I don't even want to give them 14-6. Right. I'm going to knock them out of position to where they can't get a cheap 10 or 15-yard completion and then kick a field goal and we go in at 14-6. Don't you have the what if in your head, too? But what if I don't get there and give up a big play? I, I, I guess, but again, here, here's a young guy who's learning some things as he goes, too. Gift. And, you know, and I, listen, I want to say this, too, so I clarify everything. I'm a believer in Brian Flores, and this mm -hmm. play is not changing it for me. Okay, this team is not talented. Has he made a mistake here with a call here and call? Hey, sure, definitely. You know, but they're building towards something. And I just would like to remind everybody that the San Francisco 49ers, who we're comparing to the Patriots it, right now, it's fair. in Kyle Shanahan's first year, they were 0-10. You know, so this is going to be a little bit of a process. And they do have a plan, and I give them credit for that. But this play was stupid. You're right. There's no other way I can really say it. And I, it's the only logic I can come to is that he was not trying to give them those 10, or, 10 yards so they could kick a 50-yard field goal maybe yeah. before the half this is over. But to to all of it, I mean, it's all out blitz. Yeah. It's it's okay. I first thought they brought seven, and then I'm, I'm like, what? 
They, they brought, brought eight. eight. They, they brought, brought eight. eight. This is full-fledged, all-out blitz. It's a tight end to the left, shotgun. James Conner is to the right. So right away, they have seven blockers, okay? Mm -hmm. Not always the greatest for a team because there's only so many gaps. And usually when you blitz eight, if, like, somebody doesn't get home scot-free, guys get jumbled up and they get caught in the same gap right. and not as many free runners. They didn't bring anybody from a really wide spot. No, either, right. So it, it kind of played into the Steelers' it hands. It played into the Steelers' hands. You're right. And and the one guy that was wide and you think is going to come scot-free around the tight end, James Conner goes over there to get him. So that slows him down. Oh, man, what just happened? So then the pressure was right in his face. I don't know what just happened there. But either way, the DBs, like you've said, they're – 10 yards off the ball, mm -hmm. if not maybe more, and they have no chance. I mean, Pittsburgh's got the perfect play call. It's two receivers to the right, and Juju Smith-Schuster's running a straight slot go route, and Deontay Johnson on the outside's running an under route, which is made for this type of blitz, and Xavier and Howard and the safety are, what would you say, 12 and 14 yards off there. And then the corner on the other side of the field is 10 to 12 yards off as well and has his back turned. Yeah, so that helps. So now Deontay Johnson gets the ball, and there's really only one guy that sees him catch at the ball at first, Xavier Howard, who I will say does not hustle through the whole play. Right. Hits him as he gets in the goal line. But this was this takes the cake as the dumbest play of the week for sure. And they kind of were controlling the game to this point, right. which is They're disappointing. Up. They're up. They're up. Yeah. And now you go into halftime. The only thing you can do is hand them a touchdown. Hand them a touchdown, and now they got yeah. the momentum, and you go into halftime, and your players are doubting themselves again, and, man, yeah. can we hang on, and I all think, of those things, and that was that. I think you and I both try to always see things through the glass half full. and like, yeah. well, maybe the quarterback was seeing this, or maybe the coach saw it this way. Yeah. There's, there, to me, the, I mean, you did a nice job of saying, well, maybe they were thinking this. Maybe – I just but trying to well like in there's, New England no world New it. England world loves this blitz. Yeah. But not in, in the, that situation. Not in this in this situation right here, if they even gave something that looked like this, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, they would have dropped like two guys out of here in the middle to stop this directly. Like they might have made it look like, hey, we're gonna bring eight. Yeah. But then two linebackers in the middle would have dropped back. Hey, if you want to throw one of those short crossers, go ahead. But our linebackers in there and knock his head off. Right. And that wasn't. This was all out. They came and they went after the quarterback, and that was just stupid. All right. Go. We're both going to be in South Bend this weekend. Yeah. Yes. Got a kind of a good one. Notre Dame hosting Virginia Tech Saturday, 2:30 on NBC. And uh, Virginia Tech, five and two. Three wins in a row. Three game win New streak. New quarterback. New Looking quarterback. Yeah. Irish trying to rebound from a oh. bad loss in Michigan. Whoa. You were there. Yeah. It, it was, didn't it look horrible. good on TV. It I'm horrible. sure it looked as bad, bad as it looked on TV. Yeah, it was worse in person. Yeah, and like yeah. this feeling as a, as an ex quarterback, and I'm sure you have it too, will never yeah. go away. It's like you wake up on a game day like oh. that. You're just thinking, oh, I'm so glad I don't have to like try and take a snap and throw a 20 yard out route right. or just try and do anything. Yeah, because it really comes down to a quarterback who, I mean. Nobody's going to play well in, those, in, in conditions like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. If you can find a way to be a C minus, yeah. you're probably going to win the game. Right, and that's right. what Shea Patterson did. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was rough. Tough one for Ian Book. Tough one for everybody. Man, tough. Yeah, and a, and a hard game coming up this weekend. It is. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, I was. Uh, I'll say just my two cents. Was shocked that Notre Dame got ran on like that. Oh my god. Yeah. I really am. I thought that was the strength of the, of the uh, team. Me too. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a bad bad day. And you're right. The offense they got a little too much in the East and West run game. I thought early on, and Ian Book did not play well. No. Uh, so it, it was certainly not a good look. And we'll see if Notre Dame can rebound. But we'll both be there 2:30 Eastern on NBC uh, on Saturday. Check that out. All right. We're about done. World Series uh, Game 7 tonight. Who you got? Who you taking? Who you rooting for? Nationals. I am, too. I'm yeah. rooting for the Nationals, yeah. too. The I'm Astro watching Scherzer. Yeah, the Astros beat the Yankees, and I can't root for them, so I'm rooting for the Nats. I'm and a National I League guy. You're a National League guy? Yeah. Are Astros you? should be a National League team. Yeah, well, they are right. You're right. They are an old National League team. You're growing yeah. up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even yeah. when I was growing yeah. up, you're right. They're a National League team. Like the Nationals. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah, and I'm rooting for, uh, we got Scherzer and Grinke, which will be fun. I'll yeah. be tuned in. Uh, and I, I love watching Scherzer. Scherzer, to me, is kind of like it's the Aaron Rodgers battles. of pitchers. Yeah. Right? yeah, got a different delivery. Just seems to like flick. It's like a flick of the wrist right? out of his hand. Yeah. Uh, but that'll be exciting. And last night was exciting too. You watch all nine? Uh, no, I got a, I got home and I think it was like in the fourth. Okay. And uh, watch from that point on. How up. about tonight? You punch in tonight. For the I'll, I'll put in a, it'll be full night. All right. I will. I'm not going to miss a pitch of this game tonight. But hey, everybody out there, hope you enjoyed the podcast. Hope you enjoyed our uh, third edition of what the. <laughs> f
happened okay. I think we explained what <laughs> happened pretty well a lot of the times. Uh, that was episode 85. Chris Sims on button. Paul Good D. You, man. you the man. You Thanks soon. a lot. Awesome. And hey, subscribe, rate, review. Come on, don't make me go through it. All you guys know how to use. All you guys know how to use social media at this point. And then tomorrow I got my PFT PM collaboration, Chris Sims Unbuttoned Picks podcast with Michael <laughs> Florio. All right. <laughs> Peace out. Now. I'm out of here. See ya. Yo, yo, what's up? Come on, man. Subscribe on YouTube to Chris Sims Unbuttoned Podcast. I need you. Please hit the subscribe button, please.